we in Jamaica here need not just to talk, we need to act. Because if the people in South Africa didn't take up arms, Mandela wouldn't be free today. So anywhere we are as black people under struggle, we must have to take up arms to free ourselves. Because no hands can free us but our own. I'm 26. I've been doing it after after I left school, you know. <laughs> 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 We're on this table, on the table we have liver. We have liver, tripe and beans, two beef, chicken and, and rice and peas. Right. So you see, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see, hold on. You see to you. To you, it's a buckle, but to me, when I'm eating it, it's liver, tripe and bean and cow foot and stew beef. You understand me? No, I don't care what nobody wants to say. I don't care what nobody wants to do. I just yam buckle, yam buckle, yam buckle, yam buckle, just yam in so. I don't care to. But you see, buckle eating is what I do for a living. Even the factory today, even at the workplace, if a youth, anyone, any individual who trying to climb up the top as a black in Jamaica today, it's a fight. It's a fight mentally, physically, in all ways. Jamaica youth, West Indian youth, are youth who always want to reach the top, who want to educate themselves. But yet, what education we get in? It's education of English, American, European worlds, nothing about Africa, and yet we are black. Every man I talk about money, but I want to know all black people, all people in the world, <coughs> say money is there to even segregate us, even though it's a source of living. That's why me look and say, them talking about money, 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 why? Money, 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 yes, oh lad. But money is like a slavery chain holding the poor man down. 
But I'm a lad. Money's like a slavery chain All in the black man down Do you get what I say? You don't have no money You don't have no home You don't have no money You can't wear no clothes Things get so hard Time gets so dread Poor people using cardboard for their bed But money's like a slavery chain All in the poor man down but I'm a lad, money's like a slavery chain all in the black man down. Do you get what I say? And I say we no work, and I say we no try. But all we a try, we just can't get no bly. The people in the ghetto, them unemploy. And every day you hear the young babies cry. Cause money's like a slavery chain all in the poor. You know? This yeah, true, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because we not stop fighting still, you know? By any which way. Man, it's a beer day. Or somebody where they're from the scene, man. It's a beer day. I want to go back to the car. So far, yeah? In the morning, the cops came. Dale was sitting on that snow, that step there. And Mark there, and Mark was sitting there on that step. What reading a, a, a record, newspaper. And when the cops came around, one car was parked just there, and two cars parked over that side. And this fat one right up and came and did like this. And started shooting, and Dale was in there like this from bullets. And Mark Williams had to farm like he was died. He had died. I maybe shot him and killed him. And then when Dale had dropped off there, from the bullets yeah. gone, this police came over him now. That time everybody had gathered there. A lot of people see this. This is ice. Everybody see this. He came over him and shot him again in his head. And he just kick out like that. And then a lot of people now start making noise and they got a demonstration and the police drove them off to the hospital and the minister of security came and a lot of things like that. But yet still Mark is still in the, the, the prison. GP detained on 13 charges. You know the police is driving around here free and running up their mouths and threatening people still. You understand? So we want to know what's gonna do about that. Some new turn past the wall. Three boys. 
How often do you find that weapons are used against the police? Uh, not so often, not so often. We do find a few, but not so often. And, and how often do the police get involved in a shootout or some such action? Uh, I do not have a definite figure, right? but... In most robberies, you'll find that guns are involved. Most robberies. I know of David Wellington that the police them shoot inside here. I know of David Wellington that the police them shoot inside here. And five policemen charged for it and none of them not found guilty. And yet still is the policeman gun shoot him. So where it go? Who do they shoot him? I've often a lot of stabbings. In this, uh, in this part of um, Kingston, almost every second person might carry a knife. Some carry, yes, I agree. But what happened to those that don't carry? And then the police say, him stick me up with a knife. Can you stick up a policeman who have a long gun with a little knife? I see a drop on police. Can that be? Yeah, unless him is a madman. And then you can don't fool up as so much madman. More, more often we find in that uh, Drugs, especially crack, is very prevalent in this part of here. You find that uh, the average 10 year old start using crack. Just a little herb. You hear them talk about coke, but I don't see it, I don't know if it or what have you. Just a little herb. Good old sis, that's all. <laughs> Cheap in a reggae, but self is no recommendation. But I know myself as a good one, a hard working man. Take care of a lot of people. See, show me the man who gets involved in some drugs business that I show you. But I ease, you know, I ease now. Took a commercial break, you know, okay. It was very nice, but very dangerous. It was the greatest college I've ever been, but the most expensive school fee I've ever paid. That was cooking high school, you know? I learned a lot and lost a lot. If you go to a dance, or a club or so, you will find man smoke and there, so. If you go to a football match, you will see them do it there, so. Anyway, you go, right? So that the footballer cause it, or the club owner, or the artist, it's the people doing what they feel to do. <laughs>
Herbs is not Rastafari, the people have to link it up. I want to have to smoke herbs to be Rastafari. What I want to have to do is deal with righteousness. Rastafari is not black power. Rastafari is not no cult or no religion. Rastafari a life. Christus is our father. The said one of the beginning, manifesting this time in the fullness of his imperial majesty, Ailei Selassie. It's very simple. The ways of the Creator are the ways you have to gather around righteousness. Righteousness must cover the earth. You understand? Free enterprise, the strong survive, fight against one another. Whoever this and then I throw the crumbs to you. What you know it makes a man mean to live at one and around values which preserve the tribe of mankind. It's so African people live in the beginning. The individual ways, right? Submit to the ways, the values of the tribe, which will make the tribe survive. That's what mankind have to do. So you see all the ideas of Renaissance, the individualism, the science and technology. Like I tell you, man, the progress is dead with a long fuse, and it's about to explode. I. Before we go out to do our operation, we do a reconnaissance of the growing areas uh, because basically the government is fighting against ganja, which is an illegal drug. And we stage the operation, Buccaneer, from here. We fly into the growing areas. We're organized into various teams and then we cut the, the ganja. It is very important that we fight okay. the illegal growing of ganja because you know there is a saying that one thing leads to another. You don't usually see the nurse like this, you know? Yeah, I see the nurse here. Yeah. On the ground. Yeah. Where are the other people? They're going to work here next week. Sometimes when the crop is planted, it is done in a way that is called intercropping, where you have um, the ganja plant being mixed in with other plants, such as corn or bananas. But this is not a very good attempt at intercropping because it's, as you can see very clearly from the air, it's mostly ganja. <laughs>
this field was spotted from the air because it was a pretty obvious field. Cultivated marijuana, as you know, is, is of an intense green color, which stands out quite clearly from the rest of the vegetation. Also, the marijuana plants have a sort of um, signature shape, a, a conical shape, and this combined with their color, it's very easy to spot from the air. And so this one was spotted, this field and nursery. We came down, we cut, and we're burning the stuff here now. Um, what this is all about really is, is, is just that we are going after what is illegal. We're not interested in raising this area at all. Um, the house is still there. It is always left behind. Um, we simply destroy what is illegal and move on from there. Very rough, mm. very dirty. And this is the real stuff. Mm -hmm. I suspect we've got some more in here. There's more of that. Me feel about that, say, that don't ride. For him, him, him carry me down, him carry me down. For me in the woods now, from go to street, go disturb a one. Me turn in the bush and me start do something to myself so you don't see me for months or are weeks for me in the woods. So I don't come out, I don't disturb no one out of the street there. Just plant my little herb and my food. Would you encourage your children to go into ganja farming? Yeah. You would. For hungry, it me can make a money out of right now. Mm -hmm. But right now, I cut list me at work and when I get a week time, it can help me. Right. And if me have six, seven square of ganja now and get it. Mm -hmm and get a good foreign market feed like me that get contacts with a man from over foreign to come out here, come buy it from me and make me hold the dollars. Me alright. Well basically right now I would say the people who are growing the ganja are small cultivators. Uh, they really are not the problem. It's just small farmers growing it. However, the people who buy it and the people who try to export it, those are basically usually the larger operators. Well, my life is very hard. And I try everything to succeed in life. I go around and I use cutlass to work and I try every little thing. And I come to this as a herb and I try to plant it and see if I can get something out of it. And it is the best thing I try after into my life. When you own the guy, I should listen my soul. 
Cause I am only man, I really love you so. Man, that's only not to end. If I had no hammer, sing the body. If I had a hammer, yeah. If I had a hammer, I'd knock it on your head. I knock it on your head. Yeah. I knock it on your head. Yeah. Come. Sorry, sorry, sir. It is an inborn concept, right? It is born between me and towards my living, you know, my lifestyle, you know. I represent John Public. Whenever time the public is pleased, I'm pleased. So it's my duty to please them, right? Live into the presence of the people. Sometimes it's hard to try and you make it. You me. In order to achieve, don't fork and take it. Send yourself free. Wow, I'm up to me on the rewind now coming. As you can see for yourself in Jamaica that the music play a very integral part of the society. It's very, very important to the people in Jamaica. Um, everywhere you turn, everywhere you go, there's music systems playing, there's car radios, there's music on the bus. So the music is very, very important to the people in Jamaica. And with that in mind, there's no way that the music can die because the people themselves won't give it a chance to die. I wouldn't believe I have lost the race again But I'm coming again cause I just gotta get me If I should, how much good can I have? You see, reggae music keep we the Jamaican alive because even most time you find yourself having a little problem and you hear two music a play, you rather fight to listen to the music more than give up to the problem. But probably as soon as the music over, the problem arrive back. <laughs> you know? So I don't know. Anyway, even this little station they set up, Irie, it's a good thing they do because they play reggae music all day. So if you want, you can listen to that little station and you get much enjoyment from it because they play a lot of reggae. Yeah. Many people, because of the unemployment situation in Jamaica, and many young people have jobs. They in turn feel the best way to be creative is to write a song or to be a DJ. Let's hold a second, let me get through, right? Roland Burrell, an arrow scorcher. This is the reggae version of Honey Honey. Now let's go back to 1980. I still feel it's a disservice to my nation to play only one sound because I need to broaden your scope. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery, Marley would say. 1980, 11 years ago, this foreign artist David Hudson did the original Honey Honey. Here we go. Yeah. Um, I was saying, because of unemployment, we have so many artists who feel the best way to be um, creative is to do a song. So you have many DJs in the same way in North America you have rappers and singers too. Um, not many will turn out to be about Marley or a Third World or Jimmy Cliff but the fact is that uh, eventually some will break. Don't waste 
I'm smooth, ain't it? <laughs> I'm really smooth, man. <laughs> I'm smooth. <laughs> I see the art. Yeah. Let the world know that drugs is bad, right? And I am a drug free artist. I don't drink, I don't smoke. I just, they say that I am a soul boy, right? I just don't go for that. And I know it's wrong, and if something is wrong and not good for your body, keep away from it. We always try to DJ and fight against that, right? Because we know the youth after the, it's just them thing that come to them head right now. So we always try to really, you know, put their mind off it. Tell them that the crack and the coke no good and, you know, we fight against them things. So we never really push it. That's it. Don't lick it coke, fight, not take it crack, all them things. We always are DJ our music. Well, and most Jamaicans, especially the Rasta man, don't really see ganja as a drug. That's what they're talking about. like. Right now they have this thing like they're cutting out the ganja, like they're killing out the plants and they're killing out the ganja and then you have more cocaine coming in. That's, why, that, that's what they're hitting out against because they said they are taking our ganja and then they send in the cocaine and mash up the youth's brain. You know, that's what they say, we tell them they used to take drug but most people don't see ganja as a drug but we know that ganja is on the list of one of the hard drugs but you can't tell the rest of them that. So they must read them Bible more. And they know so well the herb is the fullness thereof. The herb was made for the service of man. Most people never go in slavery, you know. And most Africans who live in Africa today, they wasn't in slave. But my true. four parents was in slavery, and I'll know I am still in slavery. It's true, mm -hmm. my locks. Uh, make sure that I rebel against slavery. That me said they wouldn't take me as a clerk for work in our bank. They wouldn't take me as a clerk for work in our the, in, in our the courthouse. Oh, yeah. Government department. You understand? Because me rebel against that kind of system. So it is the devil's attack. Send a lot of people who look like Rastafari to confuse things as to who Rastafari is. And so you have the phenomena of the dreadlocks. Anyone can grow them here long, you know, long hair freaks. Mm -hmm. But you know by the works, righteousness, right? So then, any adversary to the way of creation, any competition is Babylon. Any technology, any science that elevate man, that said that man can improve on the way the Creator make earth. And the rhythm man is to have with the rest of creation, with the plants. You see? And the result of Babylon is all these ecological problems you're having and all these green people movements in Europe. They're sensing that something is wrong with the rhythm of life. But progress interferes with it. Man thinks he can manipulate. As the Bible said, the foundation of the earth disturbed. Man changing laws and times and everything. All this represents Babylon. All this represents death. Because man was made to live. Peace <laughs> 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 
Ne ki abi o da panem ne hatta aklı mı? You will see that by and large, a great extent of our crimes are domestic crimes. In other words, it is a Friday evening and you have eight or nine children because the other unfortunate thing is that most of these poor people, well, they have no re re recreation, so they tend to procreate instead. Um, so you have families of eight and nine. There's not enough food to go around. The woman perhaps says something which hurts the man pride. He's already feeling wounded that he can't support his family. The woman makes a comment, also expressing her own frustration, and it results in a stabbing incident. We see on average about 20 stab wounds per day, on average. There are stab wounds inflicted by a knife, the, the ordinary pen knife carried by individuals or maybe kitchen knives tend to stab the chest and abdomen. Over the past year or so, there have been a number of crimes which are far beyond our usual crimes in terms of the intensity of violence. And we have deduced that they are committed by people under the influence of drugs. A lot will be determined by how many of our people take refuge in using the drugs, you know, to lull the real want and deprivation in which they live. And unfortunately, I'm concerned at whether or not officially we'll be able to contain it because, to my mind, there are far too many reports of the active involvement of persons in high places in the society and members of the police force in the drug trade. Jamaica is a transshipment port for cocaine for the entire Caribbean. Bringing things into Jamaica is easy. We don't have the security to stop no. that. Yes, and it's a police control there. And they, they knew you, they knew this thing was going on. They control it, you don't understand. It's them when 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 they want to bust anybody or when they want to when when you see when they get big shipments of cocaine, you know. When you bust a big shipment of cocaine, first thing you do is you take out half and then report half. Mm -hmm. The half that you take out, you, you send out on the street. They sell it, they send it out to the other dealers. That's why I tell you, the police control certain areas. It would be naive to pretend that there's no involvement of some members of the police force in drug trafficking. Um, the exact percentage is difficult to say. But to the extent that there are members who are involved in giving protection to drug traffickers and maybe to be trafficking drugs themselves, they are treated just like any other drug trafficker. Of course, we would recognize that because of the size of the country that we operate in and because also the fact that the, the agents who are involved in combating drugs are likely to be known by, the, by most other policemen. The fact that policemen are being targeted to make our job that much more difficult. And perhaps that is the reason why we have not had far greater success in apprehending policemen who are associated with drugs. There are approximately 
25 to 26,000 addicts, right? and they needed somewhere to go. We did not have the facilities, we did not have where to send them, so we wanted to start in small numbers to see what it is like because it is first in the Caribbean. At present, we have nine addicts, and what we are trying to do with them is to fit them for the society so that they can go back home and get a job and be able to live peacefully like any other individual. If you look across the road, right in front of us, there is what we will call a ghetto. Right? And the people them that is in India, they are poor. They have no kind of uh, income. So they make these kind of uh, small shacks and live in there. So what are the major problems in this area? Major problem is drugs. It's, it's very, very serious out there, you know? And there are a lot of addicts out there that need help. But the thing is, this program can help you only if you want to help yourself, you know? If you don't really see the need to get rehabilitation, then it won't help. You understand? But there are a lot of people out there, and the situation out there is very, very serious. And there are a lot of young guys, you know, like myself, who really need to come to grips with their life and, you know, pull things together. And the drugs, are they uh, easy to get hold of? Oh, yes, very easy, especially cocaine. It's easy, easy. You know? And almost every street corner. No, you know? It's more easily ob obtainable than marijuana. There was one girl I knew. She died. She uses her body, you know. Uses herself a lot to get the drugs. In fact, she's not responsible for that because she's powerless over it, you know. It's quite a sad story anyway, so I mean, for all of us who are addicts, should take a warning from that. Stay off drugs. I'm telling the truth. Sometimes I go out on the nights, in the nights, you know. But I don't really like it all the time. But because my family is poor, I don't have anything. That's why I come out on the road sometimes. I don't really like it. Do you have any other job? No, I don't have. I, you know, sometimes the people want to use you on the job. Have fun and have sex, which is a bad thing. You understand? Sometimes they work you, they don't want to pay you. They tell you next week, sometimes they give you half pay. Well, we do it because of survival. You got kids and uh, you have kids, you know, you have a lot of kids and the father doesn't help you. And you have to provide for your kids, so you know, you have to come yeah, out and make a little money for them. Many of the men, um, their wife leave them because they're in drugs. And so then the, the wife is the one that is taking care of the children. And that's a problem, that's a major problem. Don't you get support from the father? No. One gets support, but the next one doesn't get no support, no? Why? Well, you know, maybe he doesn't want to support it. You know, in the Jamaican man are old, they don't like to support their kids. They give problems, they always say it's not their own. And you and the mother, you cannot say it's not yours. But the government should have built up some house, some tree created house where we can really help yourself with that. We're unemployed at that. We lack of unemployment. We now, we now have no work, so we can't live nowhere good because you can't pay rent with nothing. But if we really have some work for door, then we can move from here, so. Get a life, bro. Much of this social dislocation and suffering has been heightened in recent times by the two administrations succumbing to IMF-imposed measures, which have resulted in large, and I mean large, cuts out of our social budget. 
So even less is being done for the poor who need help most. This is Western Tiwa, the, um, the unit for retarded children. And um, most of these children are abandoned. And this is where they are housed. And um, as you can see, the building is run down. The fencing needs fixing. We have intruders who come in and steal things, molest the children. So that's why you see the dogs here, because the dogs are the hacker security. If anybody new comes over the fence, they start barking and then we know somebody's on the compound. Over, the, over that section now is, um, was um, caused, burnt down, caused by electrical short circuit. The whole of that section is burned down. It um, was supposed to have built back, but um, I suppose lack of funds was one of the reasons why it has not been um, built back. So right now our priority is to get this place um, suitable for the children, you know, to live it, to bring it like a home that the children can um, feel more or less home away from home. They won't be able to get better because they are not mentally ill, they are mentally retarded. It's a birth defect that they will have to live with for the rest of their lives. Would you call this um, part of the hospital humane? No part of the hospital is humane, as far as I'm concerned. Because every aspect of the hospital needs um, looking after. It's just that here is worse than everywhere else. Do you think that the government doesn't give enough priorities to mental treatment? Well, because it's non-productive, I suppose that um, you know that's why it's you know it, it, it's yeah, neglect. Mental, the hospital is neglect because I mean, as you know, they are here and there's no production coming from this. Then there's no turnover. That government can benefit something from here. Do you try and spend on education for the young people or the or you know in the school system or even right after school so that they can become productive elements in your society? Or do you place your expenditure on the kind of welfare benefit for people who have not been able to become a productive part of the society? It's a terrible dilemma. many third world countries, including ours, has deteriorated over the past 20 years. I mean, the average per capita income in Jamaica now is less than it was in 1973. At the same time, we provide the, the net resource transfer to institutions like the IMF and, and the World Bank is about $200 million per year to service that debt, so that we pay to the IMF and the World Bank this year about $200 million more than we receive from them. They are still supporting America and England and that. For you, for any parliament, to look about the people, especially the black people, you can't link with them. No America, no England. Because once you link with them, the IMF, the IMF worse. The IMF tell you say, lay off the people. The IMF tell you say, put down the social service. 
because was IMF. International White Monetary White Fund White. by the United the States yeah. put money together to lend you we say you do have no fire next year, learn you, and teach you how to spend it, put you under pressure. Make you lay off your people, your social service, you put it down, plenty things where you're supposed to be do for your people. Them say you can't do it, so them kill your economy. About 40 cents out of every dollar, about 40% of it, is spent to service the foreign debt, the international debt. And that means that for every dollar that is collected in taxes, before we can deal with the hospitals, the school, children that need food, the rehabilitation centers for the people on the street, we have to pay to these international financial institutions. So that what you have witnessed in the Bellevue Hospital and in the streets of Kingston is the very tangible expression of what everybody is talking about when they speak about the international debt problem. What you are seeing there is the human consequence of the failure of the international community thus far to deal with the problem of the third world debt.